This is a read aloud of Fractions in Disguise. Throughout this story, you will be posed with several different questions and problems. Please pause the story when you encounter each question or problem to do some solving and proving and be sure to show your work. Also pay attention to any directions you have from your teacher about what parts might be completed on different days or at different times. Your teacher may not want you to complete everything in one sitting. Fractions in Disguise, a math adventure by Edward Einhorn, illustrated by David Clark. Some kids collect baseball cards. Some collect action figures. Me, I collect fractions. I've been collecting them for exactly two thirds of my life. In my bedroom, shelves full of fractions cover three quarters of the walls. Maybe it's because I was born during a half moon, or maybe it's because I'm one quarter genius, one quarter stubborn, one third determined, and one sixth crazy. But for me, it all adds up to one thing. I can't get enough of those darn fractions. Your first question is, the kid said he was one quarter genius, one quarter stubborn, one third determined, and one sixth crazy. Do they add up to one whole? Prove your thinking. So when a brand new five ninths went up for auction, you know I was first in line to buy it. The five ninths is a thing of beauty. When you first look at it, it looks like a one half, but the more you look, the more you realize it's just a little bit more. The room was filled with the regular customers, Baron von Mathematique, Madame de Geometrique, and the mysterious Dr. Brock, a former university professor rumored to have been fired for the illegal possession of a four zeros. I bid one half of a million dollars. Madame de Geometrique bid three quarters of a million. Baron von Mathematique bid seven eighths of a million. Our bids were clearly approaching one million dollars. Would we ever reach it? Your next problem is to determine how much each person bid on the fraction. The kid bid one half of a million. Madame bid three quarters of a million. Baron bid seven eighths of a million. So how much money did each person bid? Suddenly we found ourselves in darkness. There's foul play afoot, cried the Baron. His fears proved true. When the lights went back on, the five ninths was nowhere to be seen. Neither was Dr. Brock. Alas, he's stolen it, exclaimed Baron von Mathematique. He's, he never gets his fractions fair and square, agreed Madame Geometrique. But how can he hope to hide it, I asked. He's a master of disguise, Mr. Factor, Madame de Geometrique explained. He can take a one-half and turn it into a two-fourths or a three-sixths. It's still the same fraction, but it looks different. So am I to understand that he could take a three-fifths, I began, Multiply the three by four and the five by four, continued Madame de Geometrique, and have something that looks like a 12 twentieths, I concluded. But it's still three fifths, really, Madame de Geometrique agreed. It just does, he just doesn't want you to know it. My poor beautiful fraction, wailed Baron von Mathematique. Don't despair, I said, I have an idea. Your next task is to decide what could Dr. Brock disguise five ninths as? Provide at least three options. Prove that they are equal to five ninths. That night I worked till dawn. By morning I had what I needed, a reducer. What is a reducer? It's half ray gun and half calculator, made from a whole lot of paper clips, a whisk, some discarded computer parts, and sheer ingenuity. What does it do? 
It removes the disguise from a fraction and reduces it to its lowest terms. I tested it out that morning. For a long time, I had owned a 10 15ths, but I suspected that it could be another fraction in disguise. I pointed the reducer at it and dialed a two. The top number, or numerator as we call it in the trade, wavered, trying to turn into a five, but the bottom number, or denominator, stayed the same. I dialed a three and the denominator tried to transform into a five, but the numerator wouldn't budge. I dialed a four and nothing happened. Finally, I dialed a five. The fraction changed completely. The 10 became a two and the 15 became a three, leaving me with a sleek two thirds. The reducer was ready to go. Dr. Brock lived in a mansion that had to be one tenth of a mile tall. When I rang the bell, he opened the door halfway. Let me in, doctor, I told him. I know you have the five ninths in there and I'm going to find it. Come in, come in, he purred. Take a look around. You'll see no five ninths in here. I went in. There were fractions everywhere, piled on shelves, bursting from cupboards, covering the floor. There was even an enormous 100 hundredths hanging from the ceiling. Quickly, I spotted my first fraud. That three twenty-firsts, I said, it's really a one-seventh, isn't it? I pointed my reducer at the fraction and dialed a three. Both the numerator and the denominator were divided, and now I had a one-seventh before me, as I had suspected. That's a very interesting device you have there, commented Dr. Brock, eyeing the reducer ner nervously. Ingenious, really. I spotted another suspicious fraction. Could it be the... Could that be the five ninths in disguise? It was a 34 60 thirds and it looked familiar. I dialed a two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nothing seemed to work. You can't reduce that one, said Dr. Brock. That fraction's already reduced to its lowest terms, I'm afraid. He was smiling in secret satisfaction as he said it, but he was right. The fraction was as reduced as it could be. Can you write three more fractions that include large numbers, but are in fact already reduced to their lowest terms? I found a few more fractions that could be reduced. An eight tenths became a four fifths, a two sixteenths became a one eighth, and an 11 20 seconds became a one half, but no five ninths. I even looked through the garbage, full of old fractions and fraction pieces so small, they were worthless. I found a piece from a 128th, a 163rd, and a 192nd. The 5 ninths was nowhere to be seen. There was something I was missing. Well, it was nice of you to visit, Dr. Brock began saying. I would invite you to stay longer, but I was just about to polish all my frac... This 163rd, where did it come from? I interrupted. It's just an old broken fraction, sputtered Dr. Brock. Quickly, I raced back to the 34 60 thirds. The tiny 1 60 third fit perfectly into it, making the fraction of 35 60 thirds. This was a fraction that could be reduced. Wait, no, cried Dr. Brock. But it was too late. I had already pointed the reducer and dialed a 7. The 35 divided and became a 5, while the 63 divided and became a 9. There it was, right in front of me, the five ninths I had been looking for. Very clever, said Dr. Brock with a sneer. I didn't think you had it in you. He raced up the stairs and unhooked a rope. Suddenly, the 100 hundredths above me began falling, all 100 pieces of it looking like daggers. I dialed the reducer up to 100, aimed high, and jumped for cover. A solid disc landed with a clatter and rolled away. The 100 hundredths had become a single hole, no, no longer a fraction at all. But Dr. Brock was gone. Baron von Mathematique and Madame de Geometrique couldn't believe it when I told them the story. You did it, Mr. Factor, the Baron cried, saluting me. The fraction is yours, said Madame de Geometrique. You earned it. I put it in the most prominent place on my top shelf, right next to the reducer. Now every morning when dawn comes, the first ray of light through my window lands right on the five ninths. It doesn't look half bad. 
Your final question is, why do you think the story ends with the line, it didn't look half bad? Thanks for joining us for this story.